we're going to be going through um, different ways to uh, maintain punting distance or to get punting distance back. Uh, sometimes you're going to have an opponent, uh, it's really frustrating, who um, who keeps trying to get too close to you and smother your work and, um, and sometimes clinch and um, makes it really hard for you to get any power in your shot. So we're just going to go through loads of different ways. Um, and um, what to do if those ways don't work and uh, eventually all the way to the point where you're actually being clinched by your opponent and what, what to do in that scenario to avoid um, it keep happening again. Okay, so the first one, we're in here, um, I'm attacking my opponent, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some damage, he's tired or whatever, or he's on the ropes, um, he doesn't want to work so he steps towards me. The first thing I need to do is step back. If that works, that's cool, I can keep punching him, he'll get driven back in, either into the ropes or whatever's going on. So he comes towards me, I can step back and keep working. If that's if that's good enough, um, that's good enough. If he steps towards me and that doesn't work, then he's gonna get too close. I can't throw any punches, I might even get clinched. So this is the first thing I need to do when someone steps towards me. This arm goes across um, here, uh, sort of level where my sternum, I can't say level where his sternum or anywhere on his body, it depends how tall or short he is. Just to make it quite a strong frame for me. You'll notice as well, if you make sure you get the feet in the shot for the, for, the, for this one as well, maybe up to the up to the elbow so you can see everything to step in. Well, this is gonna go back here so I'm solid. And I can hold him there. If I left the foot here, step in, and just try to do it my arm, he's gonna easily push me back and then grab hold of me or pinch me or just get out of trouble in one way or another. So stay. And from there, I'm nudging my way. I just put a bit more pressure on. I'm not doing right, just to get enough space to work. And again, there. This just has to come back. Uh, you have to be careful with this one. You don't bring it up too high on the person's body. It's going to be, um, it's going to be against the rules, obviously. To, to, I mean, the whole thing really is sort of against the rules, but you're not going to get penalised for it because he's doing something wrong as well. He's essentially trying to clinch. As long as you keep it, um, you know, on the sternum or below, you'll, you, you'll be fine. It's when you start bringing it up towards someone's neck, you're going to get penalised by the ref. Okay, so next we've got this where it's the same kind of thing. We'll go around this way now so you can see. You need to see this lead on. So he's come towards me. I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that. But, step back, do it again. He's too quick. So I've ended up in this position here. Now from here, this is a perfect. This is the perfect position for him to clinch. So from that position there is the perfect position for him to... Um, grab hold of me and stop me working. Um, I can do the same thing as I did before with the, with the nudge, but I'll be using my shoulder a bit more and my arm. So come in, as this has happened, and then I'm gonna, again, make sure that this foot goes back. So as he falls into me, there, so I'm solid, and then do it from the other side. So I'm working, wherever he falls in, it's here. This foot's gone back just slightly, and then there. What I did was, as he fell in towards me, this arm's obviously underneath this arm, like this. Just, it's just a position that happens all the time. I'm nudging him with my shoulder, rotating my torso, and at the same time, straightening my arm. At the same time, straightening my arm. This one's better for setting up uh, my backhand, because it kind of turns him into it. If you look at the difference between the two, uh, between the two if you do it with our... Um, if you do it with my back to the, to the camera now, so you're there. So watch the first one, as he steps in, he goes straight back, I'm pushing him straight back. The next one, as he comes in, he's leaning on me, the one I just did. It pushed him a bit to the side, into that. It takes him to one side, into my backhand. Obviously I've got an arm that's doing the nudge, and I've got the arm spare to hit him with. So I fall in, this one, I'll hit him with this one first. The second one, it's going to walk him into that one a little bit better. Um, yeah, so th th those, are the, those are the two for that. Right now, an another one, the, ne the next one. So he's fallen in. We can't push him away for whatever reason. Maybe he's too strong. Um, uh, maybe there's too much momentum. Maybe he's even pushed us on the ropes and we can't get that foot back and, and get that stability to, sh to shove him away. Um, what we need to do now, we make sure that this hand is here um, looking after this arm, so we're going to need it in a minute. And as he falls in, whichever one we do, we're always going to make sure that this hand's here um, looking after this arm, because we don't want this arm to get under here and grab me. Now I can't get, now I can't get away from him. As soon as he falls in, 
that goes there. This arm's no danger when we got in contact with it anyway. In, in, in any case, it couldn't punch hard in this arm from here anyway. So as he falls in there, he's too strong for us to like, he's pushing too hard or something like that. Then we need to take this one to the side and move around. So he falls in, we can't do this one. We can't nudge him away or whatever. Ideally, that's what we'd want to do, especially when he's on the rope, but still he's trying to grab and whatever. We need to make sure this arm goes onto that side of his body. Sometimes he'll be trying to put effort in and trying to clinch. But we'll have to be a bit desperate and get on with it and move our hips away from him. I just want this arm to be on this side. So he falls in. Sometimes he's going to be really making an effort to do this. And even when we're here, he's still going to try and grab my hip with his glove on. He's just going to try and hold on to me and all that stuff. He doesn't want to work. So sometimes as he tries to do that, I need to pull my hips back and get around him. This is going to be like in the in the sort of heat of battle and things are um, sort of all over the place. So you, see, you might not spot these techniques all the time, but they are there. Um, and you need to know how to do them, how to stop someone holding you when they're desperate. Otherwise, every time you hurt someone, they're going to be, especially someone experienced, they're going to be able to grab hold of you. So one more time with that one. He comes in. He's putting too much weight and I can't push him away like I want to do, so I've got to go around him. As he, the more pressure he puts on, the easier it should be to go around him. So we're just switching. When we feel that pressure is too much, we're switching from shoving him away to uh, to going around him. All right. So the next one, we'll go back on this angle again. We'll do a different, but we'll do we'll do a quick variation of that one. We went round to the side, just 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 a little bit different. All right, so if we, um, yeah, we'll go from this side again. So you come in again, we're here. This arm's coming through this time. We still got this arm looking after looking after this arm because we don't want this to happen. We don't want him to hold on to be able to hold on. So even if that does happen, we want to try and get to this point here. And this arm's going to do the work now. So with the glove on, obviously I'm not going to cheat and do this. Uh, leave the gloves off so you can see. Um, exactly what's happening with the, the wrist and all that stuff. It's there. I'm going to pull that through. So as he comes in, we're here again like this. This time we haven't got this arm here for whatever reason. So this time the arm's not in his chest ready to push him away. Pulling in here, we can still drag this arm through. Okay. This works equally well if for some reason he puts his. Um, on there for whatever reason he doesn't want to work or whatever. people will still do stuff like this because even from here with his arm there he can then put his head on my chest and then he can push me away when he wants to work yeah so he can stop when i'm working he's he's defending comes in with that arm there that's it and he stops working and then he shoves me away when he wants to work so we don't want to be in that position either so we can eliminate that by when i'm working and he does that thing we put the arm across here we, we're gripping it tight and then we pull it through and we want to work so again, from this angle, we're working, he falls in, we've got it tight, and then we put it through and we want to work. Yeah? One more time, working, he comes in like this. This arm here, we don't want him ready to pull it away, so we hold it here, so that if we didn't want to work, we can stop him from push, so push away. It's not going to happen. Okay, I'm only using my wrist to hold on to it. But then when I do want to work, or I do want to move around and whatever, I pull it through, and then you're in a position to start, um, start working. Alright, so let's say he falls in and he gets both arms around you, like this. Obviously, we've already said we don't want this to happen. This is the worst scenario where we've, we've hurt someone and now that's it. We've got to wait sometimes 10 seconds before he lets go because the ref could be shouting at him if he's really badly hurt. He's not going to worry about losing a point or anything. He just wants to survive. He might be, he might be up on points or something like that. He, he doesn't care, especially if he's hurt. Um, you know, uh, just wants to survive that round. So as soon as he comes in, we're going to try and keep both arms on one side of the body. We're going to try and keep both his arms on one side of the body. Yeah, we check what side it is based on the person that's coming towards you, what stance they're in, and what's comfortable for you. Um, so as he comes in, I've got to keep both his arms on one side of my body, if I can. If he comes towards me, he's trying to do this. Do it again. I'm already getting his arms on one side of my body. If I can do that, you won't be able to hold, I'll be able to slip out. Again, all these things are just answers you've got to practice and try and consider. You're not necessarily going to choose to be able to do this on everyone. It's just a general principle. If both his arms, if, if his arms are on either side of my body, obviously he can give me a hug and clinch me and stop me from working. If both arms are on one side of my body, if both his arms are on one side of my body, 
he can't hold on to me, he can't stop me hitting him. There's no way he can stop me hitting him. If I was over here, he can't stop me. He needs to turn to face me, put both arms under, grab hold of me, and then I can't work. If I find a way, if he can't grab me, both arms to one side, I'll stop him. Again, there's this kind of sprawling motion with your hips as well. Because I can do this, but he'll still be able to grab onto me. I can try, do it again. I can try and put both up, but I won't be able to. If I move my hips back, he should miss. Do it again. If I move my hips back, he should miss. Yeah? It's just something to it's just something to consider when you're trying to work. Get both arms on one side of your body whenever you can if they're trying to clinch. Um, right, okay, so now now we'll now we'll go into the kind of like sort of worst case scenario. You're trying to work. You're trying to do some damage to someone and then they actually get a clinch. They actually grab hold of you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the two um, main types of clinches. We'll deal with the really easy one to deal with first and that's when his arms are over the top of your arms. It's kind of a, um, uh, like a very novice way to clinch. So you'll see people that are not very experienced in, in boxing gyms and they'll be like this when they don't want to work. They're both arms over the top. Um, that's not good for the following reason. So, like, if you, I'm working, you put both arms on the top, it's very easy to escape it. Normally, you swim one of your arms over. Normally, it's going to be the arm furthest away from his head because you want him to go in the side where, it's, where his head's going. It's easier. So, this is going to swim up and go around there, get him up. So, you get from that side. He's got a clinch. Swim up and you'll get him off. Um, normally, this is the kind of thing that it's. You, you'll notice it coming. If you follow the general principle again of getting both arms on one side of, both his arms on one side of your body, you'll escape it quick. So if I'm working and he goes to do it, I just need to get it done quickly. Okay. That's under, cheater. So I'm working, both arms over, that's it. And it is there like this. I hope I'm getting that position, hopefully I'll do it quickly. Do it in this angle again to see this, uh, this arm. So I'm working, whatever, before he gets a chance to actually hug me. Right? It's a very basic way of clinching people, but people may resort to this when they're knackered. But just swim your arm over the top and you'll deal with it. Um, okay, right, now, now the, the worst one is um, when, actually we'll go this way around, sorry, because I'm going to be playing on this arm, is when he gets both arms under. When he gets both arms under like this, yeah? Um, Right, so he's got a lot of control on me there. He's got both arms under under my arms. Um, he can pin my shoulder blades to his chest. So I can't. It's hard for me to get in the room because what I want is this kind of room here to hit him with, or I want the room to put my arm in here to get rid of him and, and hit him. Right, but he can pin me to him whenever he wants. A really hard um, position to to escape from. But he comes in. and We'll go this way around. That's easier. So he's gonna come come in and try and do that. What I'm going to try and do is swim my arm over his arm and bend it like that to put all of his weight in one direction. So do it again, like that. So if we scoot round, that's um, that's what's happened with his arm. So come in again, like I'm working, then he comes in and comes in. there. And the moment he gets his arms under, we try and do this. I've caught his elbow with my forearm. So the, the actual point of his elbow, come in a bit closer and get this here. So the point of his elbow is in line with my forearm. If it was over my forearm, I've not got as much control, like get it out, you should be able to get, yeah, you can get it out. If it's like this, get it out, he can get it out and work, and work the clinch back in tighter, because he knows to avoid that now. Come in and grab again. If I get it right in like so if it even if it's missed a bit and you line it back up, make sure you get in this elbow here. Now I'll try and escape. He won't be able to escape because I've got him on the on his elbow joint. He needs to straight he needs to straighten his elbow or bend his elbow in order to get out. If it's over the top, no like escape. He'll be able to do it because he can straighten and mess around his elbow. So make sure that <clears throat> this you've got time coming in back there and then you can adjust it. You make sure that it's in line with his elbow. Now you've got full control of him. This arm's going to get weaker. The further his weight goes that way, this arm's just going to get weaker. Squeeze with it. He can squeeze, but it's not going to be very strong. You should be able to push that off. And, and now you've got both his arms on one side. You can escape. Put it from this angle. Do it again. There. As soon as he came in, he got his arms under. Um, 
it's gone up into that position then just come around and get this arm here just come around with the camera so we can see this arm here yeah so it's got this position straight away then this arm can be removed quite easy and put on that side <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to make room to punch um, so it doesn't matter about clinching him, hurting him, like we're trying to we're trying to make room to punch. Um, okay, right now we'll run through the same two clinches, but when the clinches are successful and you can't just get them off very easily. Right? So we do that over the top one first. So we do <coughs> we do where he puts his arms over the top. We're in this position here, right? We've still got to act quickly. This is gonna be quite hard to get out of. If it's someone your weight division, like we're roughly the same weight division, it's not far off. It won't be too hard, I can muscle him and all that stuff. And you end up in this position here, it's still quite negative, you're gonna you're gonna push him away. What's gonna happen sometimes though, is he comes in and you get straight away like this. And it ends up like this. He still wants to hold, he's still turning his arm grab You just need to put pressure on his elbow there. Just let go as soon as let go as soon as you can. So sometimes you'll get it coming, and you just come under it like this and you escape. Other times it comes in and gets caught up here like this. Try and put some pressure on his elbow. So it's kind of like an arm, like an arm bar, but it's gonna put some pain into his elbow. Obviously, don't try and break his arm or anything like that. But he needs to be, he needs to be taught a lesson not to keep clinching. You so do that again. He gets caught here. Yeah, just try and grab, try and tighten it a bit more. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. So if he's trying to tighten it, he'll normally get up here. Yeah, drilling, practicing it. Sometimes I do it a bit soft, but this is where it'll end up. He won't turn and face you do anything. Let him go straight away from that point. I'll do that again. Like this. Like this. It ends up here on your neck. Again, the pressure needs to be on his elbow. If he's here, he'll get out of it. If he's too high up, he'll get out of it. If it's on his elbow, it's harder for him to get out of it. It's very hard for him to get out of it there, unless he sort of does some acrobatic stuff which you can't do right so one more time he's coming he's got his arms over the top but back to thing again it's too high up now he's come to his elbow now we're control of him they're trying to escape from that it's very hard yeah i want him to escape i want him to escape when when i put him in the position to escape i don't want him to come back and grab hold of me again yeah so i want to want to get rid of that bad position that he's that he's got me into again sometimes he comes in and grabs and he's got hold of me and i end up here this is just another version. From here, we don't want to keep going so it ends up all untidy and we get broken by the ref. We've got him in a position now where we could remove this and start punching him, right? But the problem is, if I, if I pull this out, he's got, no, he's got no grip on me with this arm anymore. If I pull this out, he's going to clinch me on the other side. See? Because like I said, he's desperate to get out of this, um, he's desperate to get out of this position where he's been beaten up. So he's come over with this. I've managed to do this. So I've got, I've got one of his arms off of me. I've got one of his arms off of me. He's not. He's only clinched me one arm. But I can't just pull away because then he'll clinch me again. Then I'm, then we're back in the position we're in. What we do with that is we use the other arm. So we'll come around this side so you can see this. We just go around with the camera where you, where you need to. And he comes in. We're here like this. We don't want to stay here forever. Obviously we're slowing things right down. The ref will stop the fight and break you and tell you both off of this kind of business. When you're here, use the other arm to keep his body here. Now he can't turn to clinch me the other side as I let go. And then we start working. So he comes in, he grabs me, somehow I end up like this. Some in your weight division, you'll, you'll have enough muscle to do this. We're here like this. We don't want to hold him there forever, but we can't let go with this because we've just clinched me the other side. We put this here. Then we let go. He tries to clinch or whatever. He can't because he's there. He won't want it. He'll want to get away. But again, um, you can keep attacking him. Um, let's do that one fast coming. There, there. Do that again. It should be quick like that, and then no one's going to notice. Don't hold. Don't hold these positions for a long time um, as a boxer because um, <clears throat> yeah, you're going to be the one. That gets penalised by the ref for um, for stuff like that. Okay, now we'll deal with the um, arms under clinch, the one that's harder to get out of. Right, so uh, yeah, we'll go this way around. Need to be able to see this elbow. So we we'll end up in this position here. Right, he will be squeezing your shoulder blades so that you can't move your body back. You know? So he'll be squeezing his hands on there, his gloves on there, so that you can't move your head back. If he loosens his hands there. Move your head back, you can make room to punch then. 
And that's not what he doesn't want. He's going to hold, hold there, yeah? We do that same movement that we did before, but this is tight, we can't get it off. So there's nothing we can do to get it off. So we can't do the one before where we did this, and then this loosened up and we got it off, see? So I can't get this off now. Right, now, again, this is tricky. It's not something that, it's not something that's really within the rules. It's kind of a grey area, because if there's a ref that's letting him clinch, then the ref's kind of uh, trying to let the fight flow and trying to let let things happen. It doesn't want to keep calling breaks. So the ref's going to be flexible somewhat with you breaking your way out of it. You're certainly not going to lose a point if you do something a little bit rough on someone who just won't stop clinching if the ref's not doing anything to him. Worst case scenario is you'll both get told off. Him for clinching, you for... Because this is probably at the point where the person won't stop clinching. Um, okay, so we've done this. I'm working. He, he's coming and grabs hold of me. I've done the same thing with the uh, with the elbows before. Like we said, I'm, I'm in line with his um, forearms and arms elbow. I'm not going to be able to get this arm off. That's not going to happen. So now what we do is we'll link our gloves together, like our wrists together like this. And then go up, 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 up. And then his arm will loosen. Because it's hurting him on his elbow, yeah? Then we'll be able to take it off. On this side. Then there'll be times he'll have to come round. I'll like, say, I'm working or whatever. He comes in, he's tight, hands high on the shoulder blade. That's it. I've got this here lined up already because it's going to be slow and out and barely move. It's going to go up like this. As high as I can get it. Right, so his weight's coming outside, but I can't get rid of this arm, so I can't get rid of the clinch. Now come around here, Sam, and look at this bit. So you can see from the camera, my forearm is in line with his elbow, with the point of his elbow again. From here, I need to get this wrist and this wrist to connect. And then they're going to lift, 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 lift. And eventually, it's going to be too much, but he's going to let go. He's going to have to. Does it hurt? <laughs> yeah. Then I could even get both on one side again and then move off. Um, in my experience, this happened twice in, in fights that I've had. Uh, the, the guys just ended up screaming in pain. Um, the ref doesn't know what's happening because, you know, the guy's clinched now. It's all done up close. Um, but they won't clinch you again after that. That, that. That's for sure. They won't clinch you again. Yeah, go back on this side. So then... Fine. Okay, so now it's just a... A bunch of um, solutions to common scenarios, uh, right from stepping back, right to actually, uh, you know, trying to release a clinch. Now we just do the the situation that happens quite often, which is where you can't get out of the clinch because sometimes you'd be too tired. You might not have the experience to um, know to go to these techniques straight away. Um, and let's talk about a couple of things with that. So, like, so it's important when a clinch happens. So we just do one arm under, one arm over. So like, no, that's it. So this is the normal sort of um, clinch situation that, that you'll be in. This kind of thing in boxing, right? So one of his arms is under, one of his arms is over, and I've got the same. I've got one of his arms strapped here, and one of my arms is, is here. Um, so it's sort of a position where um, the ref's going to tell you both off for um, clinching. Even if he initiates it, and he comes in and clinches, this is the kind of situation that's going to happen. So from a referee's point of view, he can't tell who's trying to work and who's not. It's no good to just look at the ref and complain like this. Um, people do all this stuff and complain. Refs just get angry with that stuff and get annoyed, and they'll just end up taking, um, uh, take, you know, taking it that you're trying to do their job for them, and they'll get wound up. Um, you don't want to wind the referee up because then everything's in, things just aren't going to go in your favour then. Right, so one of the main things is, when, if he's initiating the clinch, I have to show to the ref and everyone else that I don't want to clinch. So if he grabs onto the clinch, I'm trying to keep my hands moving. It's not like I'm going to, I know I can't do him any damage. I know I can't actually do him any damage. But at least I'm showing that I'm trying to work, I'm showing some sort of positive behaviour. If I've got some energy and he tries to clinch, and obviously I can't do those things we talked about to find room, I might try and get my hands on the inside. I'll try and get into this position here. So even if I can't get out of the clinch, even though I can't get out of the clinch, I might be throwing an odd little uppercut and body shot and things like that just to show that I'm active. So that every time he clinches, it's obvious that he's the one being negative and I'm the one being positive. And that way, 
when the referee providing everything's fair, which it isn't always fair in boxing, and that's why you need to resort to some of those other tactics we've talked about. If things are fair, which you know most of the time they are, the referee will penalise the guy that's actually um, committing the foul rather than both of you. And people that are negative boxers have become very, very, very good at clinching and making it look like it's no one's fault, making it look like it was an accident. But that's mostly because fighters just accept the clinch and accept the position and they don't do anything about it. So again, one more time, <coughs> he f like one of the most common ones is that they'll throw a punch and they'll fall into a clinch. So they'll fall up and, yeah, that's it. So step back again. So we're boxing, <coughs> he's gonna throw a one, two, and then after the right hand, let's say he's hit me a bit and then he'll fall in and grab me. So I can't hit him back. This is a common one. I was just going like that to the ref, like moaning at the ref. But you can't, that's not going to get you anywhere. So just try and get your arms free, clinch. So no, I, can't, I can't get him off me for some reason, whatever. It's just hard to get him off me. I've got to at least try and work for a couple of punches. Maybe try and get my hands on the inside. Try and throw little, little short punches. They're not going to do any damage. They're not going to wear me out. And they're showing the referee that I'm being positive and I'm trying to actually win the fight and he should eventually get on my side and certainly the crowd will as well and that might put the ref under some uh, additional pressure. Okay, so that's um, that's everything covered uh, for today on that subject. Um, any questions or anything, um, send a message or comment um, comment below in the comment, comment section. Uh, yet more videos to come. Uh, thanks for watching.